Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to this Surface session. Today I just wanted to take a quick look at a new piece of software I've been playing with. It's called Gig Performer from, from DeskQ Technologies. And what it is essentially is a, is a VST plugin and instrument host. It'll host all your virtual instruments and all your plugins and let you chain them together to use in a gig, in live performance. It's that easy really. There's a few others of these sorts of things about, like Cantable, is it called? Or Brainstorm Forte, of all things. And recently there was a really nice one called Freestyle, which was pretty cool, but it struggled a bit in the touch environment. Now, Gig Performer does all that kind of stuff, but it's fabulous in a touch environment. And that's, of course, is why I'm interested in it. So let's have a quick look. So this, I've loaded up a, a project, I've created my own live performance rig. I've got a keyboard here, which is routed to a couple of synths inside, and I've got an external input coming in from here, which is going through a couple of effects. Simple, just to show you what the heck is about. You've got two views in Gig Performer. You've got the rack view, and then you've got the modular chaining together view, whatever you want to call it. The idea of this rack view, or the rack space as they call it, is that you can create a rack of controls for your virtual instruments. So rather than launching the GUI and having a fiddle in the GUI, which we know can be a bit hit and miss with touch, instead you create your own controls, just the ones you want to use. So in this case, I've actually got two instruments loaded. I've got a Jupiter 8 and a Mini Moog. And all I actually want to play with, as ever, is the cutoff and resonance. So that's what I've placed here. They're both they're playing in unison together. I haven't done anything clever like layer them or anything, which you can absolutely do in this software, but I haven't had the time. So they're just playing together. If I run a, an arpeggio through it or something, All right, now we're talking. I can then get into here and play with it. Okay, did you notice something quite interesting there? Yes, it's multi-touch. Yes, it is. I can move all these buggers at the same time, if I so wish, which is brilliant. So whatever, you know, crappy non-touchable synth you have, you can create a touchable interface for it. That's really, really interesting. Now, to me, the rack space, it doesn't look awesome. It looks okay, you know? And you've got all sorts of different choices of knobs and things that you can use. And that's great. It's just, it's, it's just slightly underwhelming as far as the aesthetic goes. But what you do is you hit this button here, which is an edit button. And then down here on the left, I've got all these different things I can put on now. So I'm going to bring in a new knob to this place here. Let's get uh, a metal angled knob. Yeah, for no reason. I'm going to stick that there. There. Beautiful. Kind of. Then down the bottom half, you select the plugin that you want that to affect. So in this case, the Jupiter 8. Then I can select from an enormous list of parameters that it pulls out of the synth. Or I can hit learn and it will bring up the synth and I can choose the parameter I want to change. So what the heck do I want? I've got that that I'm going to go for LFO. Da. Can I move that one? Can I move that one? Oh, yeah. There we go. Can you see that? That's now moving that. <laughs> In edit mode, of course, I, I can just move things around and put them where I want them to go. Turn off that and that. So I'm going to put cut off and resonance 
you know, a bit more like that and put this one down here. Like so, and then I go out of edit mode, put my thing back on. And now I have control over that, whatever that is that might be doing. I don't know, I'm making this up. So already I think you can see that this is pretty awesome. Let's have a look at my external input. So I've got my Mother32 running here. Now that's running through a filter here. And also a reverb. Like that, and of course I can add the other stuff as well. Oh, that sounds terrible. Or rather than have an arpeggio, I can just play it. Yeah, all right, so it sounds awful, but that doesn't matter. The concept is that you're putting all these synths together, all these effects, you can play your entire rig, however it is you want to play. I mean, you might have a large controller keyboard, you might have a synth here, a synth here, a synth mapped here. You can do all of that, play, and just have your Surface Book or your Surface Pro 4 sitting next to you, and you can just make quick adjustments as you go on the fly. It's beautiful. It's just the sort of thing that we need. Now, let's look at the other page, which is the connections view or the modular space. And this is where I've set up my synth. So I've got my Jupiter, whoa, hey, over here. I've got my Mini Moog. I've got Reactor, which is a, an effect. And I've got um, unfiltered audio indent over here. And that's my rig. And obviously you can make it as complex or as simple as you'd like. So this is showing me all of the inputs from my ASIO audio interface and all the outputs here. So I've got a single input coming from my Moog in here and that I'm routing into stereo input into the filter then through the effect, and then back to the audio out. Here I've got the MIDI in from my base station keyboard, which is going to both of these, and their outputs are going to the out. I could very easily drop another effect in between, or for that matter, I could chain these back through here. It doesn't really care. We'll go back to my rack space for a moment. See, and that awesomeness is happening without me having to bring up the GUI for Reactor. I can do that, I think. Like so. I mean, there is something going on. I mean, um, Geek Performer, rather, this is version one, and I would actually probably kind of put it down as a bit of a beta version, because there are things that perhaps are not as good as they could be, or perfect as they could be, or smooth as they could be. For instance, it messes with my scaling no end. All of the synths come up tiny, weeny, small. So that's no good. Sometimes the pen works, sometimes touch works. It doesn't always work the same in the same place. So the way you add something to this system is that you just right click. Obviously I'm using my uh, pen in this situation and it gives you access to all the things you can add. At the moment you can put in some volume controls. There's no mixer, although they are currently working on that. So you could do little sub mixes of stuff. 
But I mean, one of their ideas is to do away with that complexity and they just want you to route stuff in and out without having to mess around with lots of um, mixing and bussing and auxing and all that sort of thing. But if I wanted to add another synth, I can just go to here. Let's add a far fisser. Again, it's, it's come in a bit small, but that's okay. Obviously there's no sound at the moment because it's not wired in. Here it is here. Now I can bring in the same MIDI output, plug that in, and I can take his output directly to here. How would I know? Well, let's turn this bit off for the moment. Then I can go back to my rack space. Am I in that? That one, this one, that one there. I could go into edit. Edit mode. Da, 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 da. So I, mean, I have a slight problem here in that I can't seem to work out how to scroll up and down in this particular window without employing a mouse. It just doesn't it doesn't seem to work. So if I bring a mouse in here, is that going to work for me simply and easily? Yes, it is. There you go. I can wheel mouse up and down, just about. I'm going to stick in a new panel, a new one new panel. I can give it a groovy color. I'm going to bring over an old school knob. Give it to the far fisser. Learn. What on earth are we going to put this to? I don't have the faintest idea. How about tremolo? Let's do that. Tremolo. Let's bring in another knob. I'm going to make that. I don't know. Don't know anything about the far fizzer. Well, look, just master volume will do. You know, and it's that simple. I mean, my demo's a bit crap. I appreciate that because I'm, I'm not investing a massive amount of time in it. I'm just trying to, to, to demonstrate the potential of it to you. And there you go. I mean, my experience of it so far is that it takes a bit of work. You know, you've got to have a bit of a plan um, because if you're setting up a, a gig, there's a, you know, there can be a lot involved in that. You want to be uh, layering your keyboards, choosing the octave ranges you're going to be using on your keyboard, putting the effects together, what sort of presets you're going to be using, what sort of controls you're going to want on the front end. And all of that takes a little bit of time and thinking about. But ultimately, all that time, all that planning, all that putting it together is going to pay enormous dividends because you're going to be able to be at your gig playing and you're going to be able to touch and move controls really really easily so there you are gig performer uh they've got it kind of on half price at 129 dollars or is that pounds i can't quite remember which to me seems a little bit expensive i can't believe they'll try and sell it for 250 dollar pounds whatever it is that seems extraordinary but for i reckon 100 quid 100 dollars that sort of price range for this sort of piece of software i think would would be ideal would be exactly on the money. It's immensely powerful. It allows you to connect all your stuff together in a modular way so you can start chaining up effects, you can start chaining up instruments and the way that it reveals all of the inputs and outputs is brilliant. The way you can chain it together easily with the pen or with touch is excellent. It could be a bit more automatic. I'm sometimes a bit annoyed that this hasn't automatically rooted itself to things but they say that they want to give you the power and the options to do what you want to do rather than having to undo things that something does automatically. Does that make sense? So yeah, there you go, Gig Performer. A lot of power, a lot of multi-touch. It's a cool thing we like. So until next time, go make some tunes.